Hi everyone and welcome to a new video about the magnetic circuits. This is our example number six. In this example I will discuss a situation where we have a permanent magnet also in our magnetic system. So let's look at our problem. We have the following system given. So a given magnetic system consists of a coil. Again we have the core material. We have a sheet. In addition we have the magnet given here in green. So we have also dimensions. So what we have is, in addition for the magnet, is the remnant magnetic flux density of this magnet is 4 teslas. And the thickness of this complete system is 70 millimeters. Now, in order to calculate the required values later on, we also have the mean path length of the core and also the mean path length of the sheet, which is the 120 millimeters for the core and 60 millimeters for the sheet. The relative permeabilities for the magnet just 1.2 but for the core and the sheet these are all equal to each other and the 6000 the air gap here is 5 millimeters now what we also have is the current in the coil which is 8 amperes and the number of turns in the coil is 2000 so we have 2000 turns here okay the rest of the information is also given here in this figure what we would like to calculate is the following. Calculate the magnetic flux density B sub G in the air gap. That's the question in place here. Now, of course, we want to calculate this is our end result. But before we move on, you need to also consider what is the right formula to get this value. So if I work out the solutions, I also start with the end result such that I can go to that end result in a structured form. So this is the end result in this case because this is the formula which gives me directly the magnetic flux density. I have the flux, I re require flux and also require the cross-sectional area of that gap. Of course, we need to take that fringing of course into account here also as we did in the previous examples. So before we also move on, let's also make the equivalent electric circuit for this sort of from the magnetic system. We go to the electrical circuit we have two sources in this case we have the coil and also the magnet so each of them will make a mmf so the mmf of the coil and the mmf of the magnet th itself in addition the magnet will have its own reluctance so rm the gap here and also on the left side will have its own reluctances the sheet will have reluctance and also the core material here so we have actually five reluctances two sources so we need to use this circuit to calculate the Phi, which is here and it's equal to all of the elements in this circuit so let's move on and calculate the first which is the magnetic motor force magnetic motor forces again the coil and the magnet the coil is again very familiar formula which is just the turns number of turns times the current now if i use the given values i will get 16,000 ampere turns that is very straightforward what we also need to know is the magnet, which is also a source. So the F magnet, in this case, we don't have turns in the magnet and there is no current in, through the magnet. So we need to know, we need to use a different formula. So this is a uh, correct formula to go actually to the, our magnetic motor force for our magnet. We have the magnetic field intensity and also the length of our magnet. We know this, which is 0 0.01 meters or 10 millimeters. We don't know this yet, but we can get this using this formula. We have now the magnetic flux density of the magnet, which is just 4 Tesla. And this is just a formula relating that to the magnetic field intensity. I have this, which is 1.2. This is the vacuum permeability, which is 4 pi times 10 to the power minus 7 Henry's per meter. Now, if you substitute the values, you will get 2.65 times 10 to the power 6 ampere terms per meter. Now that is now the required value here for the H sub M. I have the length of the magnet so I can now substitute the values. I will get 2.65 times 10 to the power 4 ampere terms. So I have now the required values for these two sources. Now moving on we can now also do the reluctances. Very familiar formulas we already discussed of course in the previous example. Now looking at the total reluctance is the two times that gap reluctance plus the core plus the sheet here and also the 
the magnetic reluctance. So just the series combination of five resistance like in the uh, simple electric circuits. Now let's calculate also each of them separately. And of course we can also write it out in this form such that you can see the formulas to calculate that. And of course two times the gap reluctance. Now let's first start with the gap. This is the formula for the gap. So we have again the length of the gap and divided by the vacuum permeability and also the cross section area. In this case, we need to also take the fringe ring account. So I will show you that in the formula also. So we have 0.005, just five millimeters for the length. This is just a vacuum permeability again. Now in this case, the cross sectional area of the system is 0.07 times 0.02. That's actually just 70 millimeters by 20 millimeters. But the fringe will also make this actual area of the gap larger. So that is then added in this dimension by this length of this gap. So you need to add by each dimension the length of this gap. So if you do that in each dimension, as shown here, you will have the more accurate result. So if you calculate this, you will get 2.12 times 10 to the power 6 ampere terms per river. That's for the gap. Of course, we need to multiply this by 2 to get this value. So the reluctance of the core material, again, a very similar formula, but this time we have the relative permeability of the core. Now, if I substitute the given values, we have this, and the result is 11.4 times 10 to the power 3 amperes term per Weber. Okay, in addition, of course, the sheet, which is in similar form, we have, again, the values for our sheet length, the path mean path length, and also the rest of the values. We can substitute all of them here and we get 56.8 times 10 to the power 3 amperes terms. The, the main difference here is between the core and the sheet is that the sheet is two times uh, smaller in the mean path length, but the area is different because this is 0 0.02 and this is 0 0.02. So that's the value here for the sheet reluctance. Now the final one is the magnet itself. Again, the length of the magnet and also the relative permeability of the magnet and also the rest of the values. So move on, we have this value. If I now substitute that, we get 4.74 times 10 to the power 6 ampere terms per Weber. Now we need to collect them now to get this our total, which is the total reluctance. So combine that and also take that twice, this value 2.12 times 10 to the power 6 I have this, so 9.05 times 10 to the power 6 mp turn per Weber. Now we have the reluctance of the total system. We have the sources. Now we can calculate the flux because the magnetic flux is related to that value in this form. So the total magnetic force divided by the total reluctance is then the flux. Now the coil and the magnet we already calculated, so we can add them up just in series. And we have this value. If I now substitute the given the, the values here, I will have the value of 4.70 times 10 to the power 3 minus 3 Weber's. We are now very close because we already have this and we also have this, that's just the gap area, cross-sectional area, which is actually shown here. So going to the magnetic flux density for the gap, I can then say for B, of gap is equal to phi over the cross-sectional area of the gap. We have the phi because it is all the same for these elements. And we have also the cross-sectional area. Now, if I now calculate this, I will get 2.51 Tesla. So this was the first what we have presented here to go to the end result. And we have now used that end result also to get that required value in this exercise. So it is then 2.51 Teslas. And that concludes this exercise about a magnetic system which consists of a coil, magnet, a core and also a single sheet with an air gap between it. So if you have any questions again please let me know and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Thanks again and don't forget to share this information so that we can reach more people. Have a nice day and take care.